I want to build something for my XY drilling machine that gets the position of the table into the computer accurately. I could just buy a fancy DRO, but I want to do some experiments and I want to get the data into the computer. And I want to use this magnetic encoder which can very accurately measure the angle of a magnet in front of it. And if I use some kind of rack and pinion, I can use that to measure linear position. So I just need to couple a magnet like this to one of my gears. And I've experimented with heat shrink tubing to do this. And this magnet is actually polarized sideways, which is why it likes to go on end on here. Oopsie. And here like this, and then when the rack moves along, that turns the magnet. But simple as it is, that arrangement is just a bit too wobbly. So instead, I jammed this gear onto a nail of just the right size, and then for the other end, I've got another little gear which has got the magnet attached to it with heat shrink tubing. And then that can go into this block of wood in a hole of just the right size. And that on here, and I'll jam that on there with a little piece of tape. And I've got some accurately drilled holes here for mounting the magnetic encoder. And then to guide the rack gear against the pinion, I made this little bracket. And now I've got it rigged up to test it out. And now I'll stop at every millimeter position on the crank here and record the angle with the encoder. So I got over 100 data points and I spent a lot of time crunching the numbers. So after small adjustment for scale and offset, I'm left with an error as a function of position in millimeters and it ranges from minus 0.1 millimeter to 0.1 millimeters, so about uh, plus or minus 4 thou, but it's clearly very periodic, so I approximated that as a series of sine waves to model this error, and that's my purple line here, blue line is the original error, and subtracting that out, I'm left with this blue line here, which is the residual error, which is actually pretty good because I'm within uh, 0.025 millimeters at least for this part here, so that's plus or minus one thousandth of an inch. And I wasn't going to talk about Fourier analysis because I figured that's beyond most of you, but then I realized a lot of people are going to ask, so here it is. I ran an FFT on my error samples, and this is organized by relative frequency. Uh, more useful is this one, which is organized by period, so this is the period of the gear, and this is half the period of the gear, so quite a harmonic there, and this will be a quarter of the period of the gear. And this one here, period 4, is the period of the lead screw because it's 4 millimeters per turn, and I did it by quarter turns. So that was very useful for narrowing down which sinusoidal components I actually had in there, and more importantly, I've now mentioned it so you don't have to ask me, did you run a Fourier transform? Now my previous test was only moving this carriage in one direction because this lead screw has got quite a bit of play in it, so I couldn't really reverse it and get any accuracy. So I've repeated the test and this time using a dial indicator as my position reference, and that way I can move in both directions. The travel was limited by the dial indicator's range, but I took readings every half a millimeter instead of every millimeter. So this is the arrow moving to the right, it looks pretty much like before, and I've got this periodicity in there. Then Doing the same points again, but moving to the left, you can see the error is different by about one division on here, about 0.05 millimeters. That's about two and a half thou. And plotting the difference, uh, for much of the range, it's relatively consistent, about 0.05 millimeters. So not too bad. Now I would expect an error that is periodic with the revolution of the gear and roughly sinusoidal if the axle wasn't exactly on center, this is way exaggerated of course, and I do have some error like that, but the bigger error is actually at half the period of the revolution, so that's a bit of a mystery. But looking at my rack and pinion jig, the magnet holder here is a little bit left of the chip itself, so that may have introduced some error. So I'll try to make it again more precisely. I just scored the whole positions with calibers, but to get them really precise, all my X's here are on even millimeters, and I just line this block up so that the crank positions of even millimeters line up with my X's, and I'll get my last bit of precision that way.
Now ideally I'd use some precision shafting instead of nails, but I've realized this type of nail that I used before is not optimal. It's not entirely round or straight. So this nail is a bit better. And I'm just going to press the gear onto the end here. And that fits in here just fine. So now I need to have another gear on the other end for the magnet. And now some heat shrink tubing on the gear and the magnet, hopefully in the middle. Okay, never mind the nail. The magnet part seems to be on center. I reused this guide here and it's a lot like the other one. Hopefully more precise though. And then I read it all my measurements and that actually goes pretty fast because I just have to push a button to capture the measurement. I don't have to type it in. And I also read it the bidirectional measurements with the dial indicator. And my errors were a little bit better. This is what I got now. And I got way too much into the analysis. I'll spare you the details. The summary is it's a bit cleaner than before, but not that much more accurate. So that's pretty small. like. This much is a tenth of a millimeter, which is about the thickness of a sheet of paper, so it's actually quite accurate for something made out of wood and plastic gears and a nail, but it's just not the sort of accuracy you'd expect from a DRO. Now even before starting these experiments, I found this online not too expensive, and with two of those, that could be like a cheap DRO, except I can't get the data into the computer. Except it turns out I might be wrong on that, because I found a signal on that thing that I could potentially parse with a computer. No idea what format this is, but it's definitely some digital position encoding. And I've had one more idea of uh, using these things to measure linear position without gears at all. They basically work a lot like a compass measuring the magnetic field in a plane, and if I put this compass down here and slide it along, watch it rotate, because I've put magnets in opposite directions along here, and when the compass slides, that's sort of a rotating magnetic field, although not terribly linear with position. So I set up a test with the magnets in here and the magnetic encoder, which is closer to the edge. I just ground up the rest of the PCB. So this is my angle change as a function of position. So you can see it's a little bit bumpy. And if I just say the angle is the position, I get a plus minus two millimeter error over that. And I try it again to approximate the error as a bunch of sine waves and subtracting that, but I still get this nasty bump in the middle. And if you look back here, that middle bump is just a bit different in terms of raw error. And I suspect the reason this is not so accurate is because I'm relying on these magnets to all be the same, but they may not have the same field strength and even the magnetic field may not be exactly lined up with each other. So my row of magnets idea wasn't such a smart one. So I think these encoders are definitely the way to go. I just have to figure out that digital signal, but that'll be for another video.